Okay, so in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the processes that are involved in the movement of substances through the xylem and phloem vessels within a plant. So up until now, we've been looking at the movement of substances through animals, in particular, arteries, veins, and capillaries. So now we need to have a look at the same thing in plants. So we know from the year 11 course that plants have both xylem and phloem vessels that are involved in the movement of substances around the plant. In, the, in this diagram, we can see a cross section of a plant. The red in our key is showing the xylem vessels and the blue is showing the phloem vessels. We know that water enters the plants through the root hairs of the root tips and then travels through the roots, up the stem and then into the leaves where the water is used for the process of photosynthesis. The root hairs we know increase the surface area of the plant in order to allow as much absorption of water as possible to take place. The water moves into the plant via osmosis and into the xylem vessels whose sole role is to carry water. We can see that the roots contain much more surface area of xylem than they do phloem and that's there to help the transport of all the water that comes in. As we move higher into the plant, the um, layout of the vascular tissue is slightly different. We can see that the vascular tissue is located around the outside of the stem in vascular bundles, with the phloem vessels being located towards the outside and the xylem vessels being located towards the inside. Over the next lesson or two, we'll be having a look at exactly what happens within the xylem and phloem, and then we'll be having a look at these structures underneath the microscope. So some current theories on translocation. So translocation is the movement of materials through a plant. So this can be either um, through the xylem or the phloem, so it's not specifically looking at a particular type of substance. Uh, chemicals needed for photosynthesis are carried by the xylem from the roots to the leaves. So we know that photosynthesis requires water and oxygen. So water is brought up through the xylem from the roots and then oxygen is taken in um, through the leaves for photosynthesis to take place. Organic nutrients that are produced as a result of photosynthesis are then carried by the phloem from the leaves to the other parts of the plant. So xylem carries water, phloem carries the products of photosynthesis. Now looking particularly at the xylem, so as I said earlier, water and dissolved nutrients form an ascending, so ascending means to move up, sap. Movement occurs as a result of a transpiration stream that we'll ha be having a look at in a second. So as water leaves the leaves, more water then is dragged up from the roots of the plant. Movement is passive, so there's no um, energy required. Usually the process is mostly by osmosis, but again, we'll have a look at that in a second. And theory behind movement of substances in the xylem is known as the cohesion-adhesion transpiration theory or the cat theory. Okay, so we can look at this diagram of a tree to have a look at how the cohesion adhesion transpiration theory works. So we're actually going to look at them in reverse, or well, a little bit out of order, but they all work together in order to get the water from the roots to the leaves. So it doesn't matter which order you, you know, you learn them in, but as long as you remember that you have the C, the A and the T. So firstly, we have transpiration. So transpiration is simply the evaporation of water from the leaves of the plant. So when the stomata open, water molecules are able to move out into the atmosphere. And as this takes place, more water molecules are then able to move into the xylem from the roots. So basically, it's just a constant stream of water. As one leaves, another one is able to come in as a result of the transpiration taking place. Next we have adhesive forces, so the adhesion part of our CAT. So we know that the term adhesive means to stick together. So in the adhesive forces, there is an attraction between the actual water molecules and the wall of the capillary. So this, sorry, the wall of the xylem, I was reading the word capillarity there. So this means that the uh, water molecules are dragged up the walls of the vessels by this 
um, sort of sticking of the water molecules to the sides of the xylem vessels themselves. Then we have cohesive forces. So we know the term cohesion usually means that a group is working well together. So cohesive forces are actual attraction forces between the individual water molecules. So each one sticks to the other one. So they basically just drag them all through the xylem vessel. So you can think of it when you're drinking out of a straw. As you drink, obviously the water entering your mouth means that there's more room at the bottom of the straw for the water to fit in from your glass. And then the water molecules stick together to each other, which is how we get a steady stream of water when we turn on a tap because the water molecules all want to stick together. And then the co the, sorry, the um, adhesive forces between the water molecules and the side of your straw. So as I said, as water moves into the xylem, there's a root pressure that forces the water upward. So osmosis brings the water from the soil into the roots. And then as more water comes in, it sort of pushes the other along and they all sort of keep flowing in this steady stream. Okay, so now we've looked at the movement of substances, in particular water in the xylem. Let's have a look at the movement of substances in phloem. So in the phloem, a little bit different to the xylem, movement is bidirectional. So it can either go up or down. Um, unlike the xylem, it all moves up. The phloem can go either way. The flow of materials is an active process, so we require some kind of energy. It is driven by osmotic pressure, so the differences in the sugar and the, and the water concentration on either side of the cell However, the process still requires energy. And 90% of the dissolved substances that are transported in the phloem is glucose, which we know is a product of photosynthesis. Now, the uh, theory behind the movement of substances in phloem is known as the source to sink or the pressure flow theory. So the difference in osmotic pressure drives phloem sap so it just it's the the differences of the concentration of sugar on one side of the cell to the other is what drives the whole process so the direction of the movement depends on where the sink area is in relation to the source so the source of the uh, materials is any uh, structure within the plant that is able to undergo photosynthesis so we know that photosynthesis takes place mostly in the leaves in the chloroplasts of those cells so our sources are our leaves the sink is then the place in the plant that needs the glucose in order to undergo respiration so that could be the roots it could be the flowers it could be um, bulbs it could be fruit so that is why we say that the movement of substances is either up or down because obviously some leaves could be lower in the plant in comparison to where the substances are needed so the substance is going to move up however if the substance is moving to the roots then it is going to move down so loading into or loading from the source can happen in two ways so symplastic loading is where the sugars other nutrients and water move from cells to cells via the cytoplasm and apoplastic loading involves sugars, other nutrients and water moving from cell to cell via spaces in the cell wall. We don't really need to know the difference between symplastic and apoplastic loading, but it's good to have an idea that all these things can happen in different ways. So here we have our diagram similar to the one that we looked at for the xylem. Okay, so we can see number one or up here is our source. So as we can see, this is an example of an onion plant. So the source cells would be in the leaves and the sink cells would be in the bulbs where a lot of growth needs to take place. So respiration needs to take place quite often. So the loading of the source and other mineral nutrients into the phloem takes place in the photosynthetic source. So the sucrose is created as a result of photosynthesis. The concentration of the phloem sap then increases and osmotic pressure at the source is also increased. So water actually gets drawn from the xylem into the phloem. Okay, so water concentration is high in here. 
but water concentration is now low here because we have this movement of all these sugar molecules. So sugar and water have come out. Much more sugar means that there's a higher concentration of sugar, low concentration of water. So water is able to move from the xylem to the phloem via osmosis. Then obviously via diffusion, we have an area of high concentration, an area of low concentration. So the sugar molecules begin to move away from the source towards the sink where there's a low concentration of materials. So offloading happens here, but we need to get um, the substances from a low concentration to a high concentration. So active transport is take, it takes over here. So energy is required to move these substances from within the phloem into the sink cell. Okay, and lastly, water is drawn out with the biosmosis. So we know that um, with the concentration changing, water will also follow the sucrose, but then that means that water will head back into the xylem in order to keep the pressure or the, the flow continuously going. Okay, so the sucrose will go into our sink cell and then the sucrose plus the oxygen that is created via photosynthesis will be used in order to carry out uh, the process of respiration to provide these cells with energy to be able to grow.